glad to have you here with us. This song is called Arise, and even though you can't really sing, we're going to ask you to stand up and arise anyway and just take these words in. One thing we ask of you, one thing that we desire, that as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. seats, why don't we turn and wave to one another and smile from behind our masks. Very good. I invite you to be seated. So let me introduce myself. My name is Matt Hadley. I'm the senior pastor here at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay. And what an honor it is to be able to share in this time of worship with all of you at home and all of you here in the sanctuary. This is the first Sunday of the month, and so we will be having communion. For those of you in the sanctuary, hopefully you received one of your communion kits. If not, uh, wave your hand and, and we will get one to you. If you're at home, we invite you to have some kind of bread or a cracker and some kind of wine or juice that we might partake uh, together. And then again, as our tradition has been, after the uh, 1030 service is concluded. We will be outside for about a half hour uh, to have anyone who wants to drive up and receive communion. We want to make sure that everyone that desires this as an important uh, part of their Christian walk has the opportunity to do that. And so I'm excited uh, to share a, a good word with you this day, but I also know that this has maybe been a hard week for some, maybe a week of celebration for others. And so if you'd like to have your prayer, whether it's a concern or a joy, be uh, heard aloud when it comes to the prayers of the people, we invite you to text your prayers to 414-331-2691, and we'll be able to hear that prayer, and our prayer team will be uh, lifting that up all throughout the week. Well, I'm, Pastor Andrew, why don't you come up here? I know this is a little bit early, but... 
For those of you who maybe haven't met Pastor Andrew, we are very fortunate to have Pastor Andrew on staff to work with our children, our families, our youth. He's, he's good at all those things. And uh, he is the, the mastermind behind all of these videos that we've been having for uh, children's time. And so, do you want to set this one up? But I know that when it's done, you're going to have a few words to talk about our children's ministries. Well, anyone who knows me knows I love to talk, and this is about how we love to talk and chat. You know who else loves to talk and chat? Animals do. So let's uh, roll that roll that footage there. Hey friends, Pastor Andrew here, and I want to ask you a question. How many of you have seen dolphins in real life? You know, maybe you've seen a dolphin in a zoo, at an aquarium, or, or out in the ocean. Dolphins are incredibly intelligent creatures. They can use their brains, which makes them almost as smart as humans, according to scientists, but they use their brains to, to communicate with one another. That's right, dolphins can talk. Now, dolphins don't use words like we do. They use chirps and tweets and, and clicks. Yeah, dolphins use their language, their talking, to talk to one another about getting food or avoiding danger. You know who else likes to talk a lot? People, we like to talk. We like to talk about anything. We like to talk about school. We like to talk about our family. We like to talk about sports or what's happening on television. You know, one of the most important things we can talk about is Jesus. When Jesus was leaving to return to God, he gave a challenge to his friends, his followers. He said, I want you to tell everybody and spread the good news about my resurrection. One of Jesus' friends who did this really well is Philip. We don't hear a lot about Philip, but Philip is, was always leading people to Jesus. One day, God sent an angel to Philip and introduced Philip to a person from Ethiopia. This person from Ethiopia, which is a country in Africa, was reading about Jesus, but he didn't quite understand what was going on. Philip shared with the Ethiopian person about the good news of Jesus. And not only did he share that good news and talk to him, he also baptized that person. And what happens next is incredible. Because Philip shared the good news of Jesus with this person from Africa, parts of Africa now know about Jesus. Philip was faithful, and so people in Ethiopia and Africa got to hear the good news about Jesus' life and resurrection. We can help share good news, sometimes with our actions, but sometimes with our words. Like dolphins, who love to talk, we can use our gift of gab to share the good news about Jesus' love. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, help us to be talkative about Jesus and the love he has for us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I am so excited because we have five kids who are here with us today, and we hope to have more in the future. We're going to head outside and have our Sunday school lesson where we're going to dance and play and talk more about Jesus. So if you all would come down, we're going to head out this way, and we will get picked up later on. All right. <laughs>
Let us pray. Creator God, around us as we move and look around at life, we see more and more signs of new life emerging on your earth. We feel blessed that your spirit wind kisses our cheeks, and we feel blessed to feel the warmth of your love as the days grow longer. Yet we know many in these days have trouble reveling in the beauty of the earth for they are lonely or searching for meaning or simply overwhelmed by a COVID funk. Give us ways to help, O oh God. Guide us by your spirit to arise and go to those you have already prepared to receive the good news of your son, Jesus Christ. Give us courage to begin conversations with them about spiritual things and discernment to understand the yearning of their hearts Give us wisdom to explain how Jesus can fulfill their deepest needs and clarity to invite them to begin a relationship with him. Make us agents of his love wherever we go and deepen our own commitment to follow him. Purge us of our indifference, our complacency, and our tolerance for racism and injustice around us. Empower us to help mend breaches in our society. Equip us to heal the divisions and take up the work of reconciliation. Help us back up what we say about our faith with action, for it is in giving that we receive. It is in sharing what we have that we grow ourselves. Now, Lord, hear us as we turn our attention to special prayer requests made by people of our congregation this day. A prayer of thanksgiving for Kirsten and her recent resolution to an, an ongoing challenge. Prayers for Heather. May she continue to heal and find strength after the passing of her husband. Prayers of hope for new beginnings. And prayers for Ryan while he continues to work on his mental health and substance abuse disorder. Prayers for Lynn Bennett. May she continue to recover and heal from her bout with pneumonia. And prayers from Lynn Bennett, offering up gratitude for the hugs and love she was shown during her time in the hospital. She asks for God's grace during recovery and thanks her many, many dear friends. Prayers for a man in ICU, for a niece who continues to struggle, For parents who don't see eye to eye with their children on COVID precautions. For a mother recently diagnosed again with breast cancer. 
for an estranged sibling, for all of those suffering with lethargy and ennui, prayers for Linda who broke both feet and then her ribs, for Gail struggling with challenges, and for Kathy whose recovery has been set back. Prayer of thanks for a husband doing better. Prayers for a son-in-law, Nick, who's suffering with extreme pain. May he find a solution. Prayers for JJ Joyce's daughter, Tina, pregnant, suffering with terrible migraines and the stress of taking care of her two-year-old, her husband, and her business. Prayers for all of those who are still housebound among the congregation and Milwaukee. May they feel God's love inside and around them every minute of every day. Prayers for Margie and Natalie. Prayers for dysfunctional workplaces. Prayer of thanksgiving for Tim Karth and the Radio Rosies for bringing joy into our living rooms last night. Thanks be to God for their gift of music. These are the prayers of our people today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. In the days to come, give us wisdom and grace as we navigate the return to parts of our old routines. Keep us and all your children safe so we may continue to enjoy the richness of life you intend for us, O oh God, through your Son, Jesus, in whose name we offer all our prayers. Amen. We not only offer our praise and our prayers, but we offer our gifts, both our spiritual gifts in service and financial gifts that we are able to make to support the work of Christ Church. We can't pass the plates right now in the pews, but we can receive your offerings at the end of the service if you put them in the box that's here down front for those of you in the sanctuary. Those of you at home can uh, give your gift by mailing it to the office, giving online, or uh, making sure we're okay back here, um, giving online or texting your gift, and you can sign up for recurring gifts as well, which is what I do, because I don't want to forget to give. Um, we also give to a mission of the month every month, and we are in a new month, the month of May, and this month's mission is the United Methodist Children's Services, and many of you are aware of their many, many fine ministries. We are privileged to be able to support them through our mission offerings and in other ways throughout the year. Let us, with joyful hearts, give to God. I wonder how old that little girl was. That was, that was impressive. So <clears throat> I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit sometimes pokes you and nudges you, and you need to respond to that. So 
instead of giving you one sermon today, I'm going to give you two. I didn't know I was going to give you a second sermon until I experienced uh, Pastor Andrew's children's moment with the dolphins and the way in which they communicate. And I learned something about dolphins and the way they communicate and about whales and the way that they communicate. Their communication with one another, not whale to dolphin, dolphin to whale, but whale to whale, dolphin to dolphin. Did I lose anyone yet with that? It freaks out sharks. Sharks don't like it, and so their communication removes that danger from them. And so I'm sure there's a sermon in there somewhere about how important our communication is and our connectedness is to keep us safe from the the sharks of the world that are swimming about us at all times. Amen. Sermon number one, done. Sermon number two is a little bit longer, all right? Just a little bit longer. And I, this, this story, and Andrew teased it, it's a fantastic story. It's an important story. And I think we need to hear it in context. You know, it's hard for us to imagine. We're still only five weeks removed from Easter. It seems like it was so long ago. And yet, the church has now really started to roll the way Acts tells this. And they've replaced Judas with another, and their work is so abundant, and they're so on fire moving forward with this mission, moving forward in the way that they need to recruit seven other individuals to help out with the food distribution ministry. From the very beginning, God's people have been feeding God's people. And I'm so proud of the work that we do to clothe the naked and to feed the hungry. And so two of the seven guys we hear a lot about in Acts, it is uh, Stephen and Philip. But these people were more than just Meals on Wheels uh, directors. I mean, they were also evangelists. They could preach. They could preach. And just before this encounter that we're going to hear of uh, today, there's something that happens. There's a man named Saul, although we come to know him as Paul. And Paul sets out to murder, sets out to step on, sets out to squash the entire movement of Christianity. And just before this account, there is, there is Paul overseeing the execution of Stephen, who was stoned to death. And so he goes out on his own, and he is preaching. Philip is preaching, and he has a very successful preaching ministry, but he too is always in tune to the Holy Spirit And so we have this beautiful story right now from uh, Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip, quite the athlete, he was able to run down this chariot. I I just picture him running beside the chariot, you know, trying to, to get in there. And he ran up to it and he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, 
and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Zotus, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There is a dividing line in this book of Acts. After the first appearance of Saul, but before his seismic shift of his conversion, the Ethiopian, this Ethiopian, given no name five times, Luke, who wrote Acts, just calls him the Ethiopian. Uh, the Ethiopic eunuch comes on the scene and is seated in the, in the chariot reading from Isaiah. And I learned another fun fact. You want another fun fact? He was reading out loud. Does anyone know when people first started to read quietly, silently to themselves? It wasn't until about the year 400. People just didn't know you could read to yourself. If you were reading, you read it out loud. I, I read that in one spot, and so then I had to go and research, and sure enough, can you imagine that? Not being able to read silently? It would have made school time really interesting, wouldn't it? Well, this Ethiopian, this eunuch, is a powerful man. He's in charge of all the queen's treasury. He is a black man. And he is also identified with a sexual reference, a eunuch, set apart in the world of our ancestors and faith. And this man, this black Ethiopian eunuch, is an important part of the Christian story. And a very important part. And, and our story is not complete without him. The Ethiopian comes up soon after the resurrection with the empty tomb still in our minds. And so we take ourselves and we go into this story, and we, along with Philip, ask, do you understand? Do you get it? Do you know there is a seismic shift that is coming? The world will change. The world will change, and it's going to change in a way in which we see that everyone is welcome. All are welcome. And when we friends learn to lean on one another, when we trust the source of all life, when we place all of our hope in the risen Christ, the God who is in it with us will get us through together, all of us, no matter the color of our skin, no matter the language of our speech, no matter our sexuality. This is done for the entire world. And so it's important for us to know that Philip's baptism of the Ethiopian eunuch offered a grace-filled preaching point. All are welcome. Now the Great Commission, the final words that Jesus leaves according to Matthew's gospel says, go to all the nations, baptizing them, converting them. And Philip lives this out in reality. He himself does it. He himself knows that no one is to be excluded from the love of God. And so we have in this story three players, three really important players, and the first is obviously the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who orchestrates all of this, the Holy Spirit who is the primary catalyst to extend the gospel, to break down the barriers of geography or ethnicity, the Holy Spirit who is in Philip's ear, God's great active presence enabling the church uh, to, to mission to those who are marginalized. But then there's Philip. We can learn from Philip. We can learn from his responsiveness to the Spirit's leading. We can learn from him with the forthrightness of, of the questions that he asks. But we also need to learn from him the knowledge of Scripture. If someone walked up to you with a passage from the prophet Isaiah and said, what's up with this, would you know how to respond? Would you be able, starting wherever that passage is, to tell the entire story of the good news of Jesus Christ? Friends, I think if we could, and if we do, God is time and time again going to put us in a position to be faithful in doing that. Philip is on the road you don't need to be in a building to experience a living God. Nope, an on-the-road experience that is powerful. And so Philip went where God told him, did what God told him to do, and left the results 
up to the Spirit, up to God. But my favorite character in this, this story is the Ethiopian himself. He went up to Jerusalem to worship, and yet by the, the Hebrew scriptures, he was an outsider. By Jewish law, he's an outsider because cra- castration was forbidden. We read that in Deuteronomy. He would have been excluded from full involvement within the, the faith community, and yet there he was, seeking, searching, Yes, excluded by sexuality, geography, and nationality. Those are similar concerns that we're still trying to deal with right now in the year 2021. Are we on the lookout for those on the margins of society? Can we be a community of faith that says and actually means it when we say it, God, send us those that no one else wants. Send us those that no one else wants, the least, the last, the lonely, the left out. We want them because we have good news for them. But this Ethiopian, he is drawn to this faith. There is something about it that he can't quite articulate himself. We would call this the provenient grace of God, that grace of God that goes before us, trying to woo us into relationship with the divine. This emptiness that we know can't can't be filled by anything that the earth can uh, provide for us, something that has to come from a higher source. He's studying the Bible even though he doesn't understand it. And friends, even if you don't understand and you search the scriptures, a light is going to be shed. It may not be immediate, but keep studying, keep striving after the holy. Now, this passage that he's reading is actually from the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, and it speaks to to crucifixion. It's talking about what's going to happen to Jesus. But just three chapters later, we hear about uh, the, the Savior of foreigners and eunuchs, that they will be saved. There's good news in this book for this eunuch, that he is going to be a part of God's salvation plan something that the Jewish community themselves did not yet even embrace. But this eunuch asked questions. He asked questions because he wanted to learn, and he asked the exact right questions. He said, how can I understand this without someone to help me? Who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? He was eager for guidance, for spiritual guidance. Are you? Have you sought out spiritual direction in your life? And so once he hears this whole story, he gets it. Philip has communicated beautifully. He says, well, why can't I get baptized? What is to prevent me? What is to stop me? What is it that hinders me? And so he made a response. He made a response. Why not me? Why not here? Why not now? God's intent is that all are included. And so they went down to the water. Went down to the water. And there, Philip baptizes this eunuch. Baptism. And the eunuch is euphoric about it. That we know that anytime something enters the water, it ripples out. And that's why this story is so important to the Christian story. Because of the ripples the ripples that go far beyond uh, a, a, a wilderness road just outside of Jerusalem, goes all the way, as we saw in that map, to the continent of Africa, and that people still can track their Christianity roots to this eunuch who came back on fire with the Holy Spirit, on fire. And so I stand in awe of this eunuch, This eunuch who was wealthy enough to ride in a chariot, educated enough to read Greek, devout enough to study Isaiah, humble enough to know that he cannot understand without help, hospitable enough to invite Philip into his chariot, and bold enough, bold enough to say, why not me? Why not here? Why not now? And so what we see in the face of persecution the good news cannot be stopped. Even while Christians were being hunted down, the good news ripples out all the way to another continent. And that is good news.
That is good news. And so do you relate more to Philip, or are you more like the eunuch? Do you wish you were more like Philip? Do you wish you were more like the eunuch? God has great things in store for everyone who seeks a deeper understanding, a stronger connection. And so there are some tangible things that we can do to grow in this connection, things that we can see and taste and touch. And so Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, gathered in an upper room with his inner circle, and he took bread, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body, given for you, take and eat. And from that one loaf, all were fed. When the meal was over, he took one of the cups of wine, said a prayer of thanksgiving, and then said, this is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many. As often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. And so we have an opportunity to take part in this great feast. And so I'm going to offer up a prayer to bless these elements, then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. And then you at home and you here in the sanctuary, we will consume together. Let us pray. Spirit of life, we come to you seeking, seeking greater meaning in our lives, greater purpose in our work, and greater hope in our world. Call us into relationship with our brothers and sisters who are different than us. Call us to seek out those whose world experiences challenge our own so that we might seek you in the face of others. Call us into your ways of love by calling us to share our lives with others. Guide us so that we do not just lend a helping hand, but that we reach out to get to know our brothers and sisters in Christ. For you have called us not to just help, but to love, love one another. Hold us to this call in our lives to love our neighbors, all who are in the world, as ourselves, as our brothers and our sisters in you. And so now, mighty God, part your Holy Spirit to be present in these elements, that they may be truly for us the bread of life and the cup of blessing. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so I invite you to receive the bread of life. and to drink from the cup of blessing for the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. These cups fit very neatly in your pew, the uh, pockets for your, your pew. Uh, after service, we will uh, clean out the pews and pick these up. And so let's continue to worship our God uh, through the gift of song.
higher, be lifted higher. So let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. So let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. A strong. So, brothers and sisters, uh, just a couple of items that I want us to be aware of. Uh, there's a new member class that's going to be held uh, via Zoom on Monday, uh, May 10th, for all those who are interested in taking membership. And on May 17th is our annual charge conference meeting. That, too, is going to be via Zoom. Uh, the link will be found on our, our website. You know, we said a, a few weeks ago, boy, we hope that we're going to be able to offer in-house, in-person, children's mission and ministry again May 1st. We couldn't make that promise, but what a joy it is to see, even if it was just five kids walk out together, even if four of them came with the same parent, you know, it, that, it's, just a, it's just a blessing. That's just a blessing. So the next thing that, that I can't promise, but I want to let you know we're really hoping can happen, is going to come June 1st. Right now, you know, we're saying 25% capacity, and we have to sign up via Sign Up Genius. Um, we're really hoping that on May for our June 1st, we can open up to 50% and not have to register. Just keep that in your prayers, because if it does happen, that means that things are going well in our society, that more and more people are being fully vaccinated, more and more people are wearing their masks and making good, good choices. And some say, well, what happens if you have more than 50%? Well, I, this is my sixth summer here, and, you know, in June, July, and August, we don't usually have more than 50% in-house anyway. So I keep that in prayer. So, friends, let me give you one more challenge. Like Philip, this week, listen for the Holy Spirit. Listen to where you might be guided, because you might be the only person that is the perfect person to be there and to witness or minister to someone who is in need. Have a blessed week. Amen.